Hey, what's going on everyone? Here with Michael who just graduated Tech Sales Ascension. Literally in a month and a half, went from unemployed to now three days ago moving to Austin, starting his new job at Rubrik, a large cybersecurity company on Monday. Obviously really excited for you, but a unique time for us to collaborate. Before you get in the seat and talk about your experience to date, just for reference, graduate college, two years, tried a couple things, nothing really stuck. So I'll give the floor to you to learn more about your background, but I think paint the picture for us and we'll break it down from there. Cool, yeah, first of all, thanks Eric for having me um, and really kind of showing me a warm welcome to Austin. Um, yeah, to really kind of uh, paint a picture of my background, I'll take it a little even before I graduated. Um, in college, a lot of my experience was rooted in research. I worked in a couple of neuroscience labs and was very interested in pursuing a PhD in neuroscience after graduation. And, um, but as I got experience in the labs, soon before graduation, I decided that that's not the career path I wanted to do. I just didn't see myself doing that for six, seven, eight years being in a lab. Um, I didn't really see the long-term benefit, at least for me. It didn't really fit in with what I wanted. So to answer your question, when I graduated, I was really confused. Um, I thought it would be such a smooth transition into you know, finding what interests me and then applying for a job, but school was my entire life pretty much. So once that structure was completely out, um, it was really hard for me to kind of gain traction, to, make, to even make a resume. And so after graduating, it took me a little bit to really kind of get my feet beneath me and continue a path towards, uh, towards where I am today. Yeah, and I know, you know when you joined Tech Sales Ascension, that was one of the things that you expressed you were kind of concerned about. You had kind of this scattered experience, if you don't mind me saying, you know, and, and not really structured, like you hadn't worked a formal, even corporate job, like transition out of that to tech sales. So like maybe briefly give us a little bit about like some of the things you did and then how like maybe where you were before tech sales ascension in terms of why it worried you, how you couldn't present it, all these different things, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, the good thing was that even though what I did was kind of scattered and I felt like I never really had a long-term direction, I always was doing something. So at first it was um, maybe of just applying to any job, to be honest, because at that point I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I didn't really do the research that it would require to really figure that out. So I was just kind of, let's get out there and let's see. And so eventually that kind of led me to get into user experience research actually, um, to which I tried starting my own freelancing thing. And it was all right, but again, same thing. I didn't see myself there kind of long term. And so that was the kind of common theme, that even though I was doing something, whatever I tried, it was like, there wasn't this metric of how do I know I'll be successful? Um, because I didn't have that experience. And so I was thrusting myself into a position where I was only kind of following myself and didn't really have the guidance. So then coming into Tech Sales Ascension, and we could probably get into um, how I found Tech Sales Ascension and whatnot, but that was a big kind of insecurity that I had, was like, I spent two years not working this real job, this corporate setting lifestyle. And so I had this big block in my head that was like, this, this is bad. I don't really have real experience over two years. And I thought that would really impact my interviewing process negatively. But as I found throughout the interview process, it was actually not the case. And I actually used that experience as part of my story, you know? And a lot of it was just like, you know, 23 years old, it's completely normal, I'm young. It's normal for people to not know exactly what they want to do um, or the direction they want to go. And that was the story that I had and it was true. And I used that throughout my interview process that, you know, I tried these things and eventually that time allowed me to really figure out what it is that I wanted to do and why I wanted to pursue a career in tech sales. Now, great perspective and I know many things stood out through the process where I know one thing we'll get to very shortly, you applied only to 17 places, you got seven interviews of those 17 applications. I think you really dove deep, so we'll definitely get to that in a minute too. But I think maybe take one example, like as an example, one of the things you mentioned was the UX design experience. Where were you maybe before? and struggling to package that? And then how did you actually reframe that to like a positive learning experience, all these different things? Right, so that UX research experience, it wasn't like a professional setting. It was my own social media freelancing business that I started and I wanted that to be successful. And 
when, and it got to a point where eventually I realized that I didn't see myself doing this in a few years and I felt like I maybe only did it because it was related to my major, but it was not something that I was actually passionate about. And so coming into the interview process for tech sales, that was a big insecurity of mine, was like, this isn't a professional experience, you know? Even if other people, other candidates maybe had experience like waiting tables, for example, or being a server, it was still professional experience. And for me, I didn't have that workplace setting under my belt. So coming into the interview process, I was like, wow, I don't even know how to, I, I feel like they would look at me negative for that. Um, and I would be at a disadvantage compared to my other, compared to the other candidates. But I'm glad it, it wasn't a negative factor at all. And I really just learned to be genuine with it and realize that I'm young. And so it's very okay to have the experience that I did, even if I might have been insecure about it. Yeah. And I know like even some of the things you mentioned, right? Like it kind of went from this black box of like, UX design, unstructured experience to where you're explaining in interviews, correct me if I'm wrong, that you know you had a social media page, you would tar go after targeted accounts in a fitness niche, you would test different messaging, right? And even though it wasn't formal quote unquote experience, I think all that ties together to a great story. Like one, you actually tried to do something on your own. And then two, you map that to you know wanting to get back in a team environment, wanting to have a more structured path to a high earning career and all those different things. So credit to you and diving into that experience as well, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, 17 companies you applied for, which is on the lower side, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You got seven interviews out of that, which is huge. Like normally if you're getting a 10 to 20% rate, that's great. You're almost what, like 35, 40%, so that's huge. Take us through like some of the things that you did that you think maybe set you apart and really got you on right away, like noticed versus the average candidate, whatever it might be. Yeah, so upon joining the Tech Sales Ascension course, you know, the academy section really gave me a good foundation for um, being able to be successful throughout this process. I think the biggest thing for me was, before we even get into the details, was like, I knew that Tech Sales Ascension was something that, like I, I knew that I would be successful because I'm taking courses and lessons from people who are successful in tech sales like yourself and so for me I knew that if I really honed in on the material then I'd be good and so it was really at first going through the course and really absorbing in the information not just watching the videos but really understanding the landscape of tech sales and what I need to do in order to be successful both in terms of like the day-to-day -day job but also in terms of how to prepare for interviews and so when it came down to actually looking for companies I wasn't lazy with it. I really took the time and most of my time in the course was spent researching companies. And so first I only applied to companies that were actively hiring um, because there are a lot of them and it might take longer to find, but, I, but for me I felt like I wanted to get a job as soon as possible and I knew that if I really focused all my attention on those companies then um, I would have a better shot of doing that. And so a lot of my research was done on RepView where I looked at specific things, mainly like quota attainment, as well as product market fit, and as well as the culture, and I also looked at the reviews. I made sure to also look at LinkedIn and see if there were people who were getting promoted internally, from SDRs to account executives. You know, I obviously, like, this is the stuff you teach, so I don't want to get too, too deep into it because it's in the course, but um, I really made that a priority. Yeah. And so, because I did that, I was very confident in the companies that I was applying for and I saw myself working at pretty much every single company that I applied for. Now obviously some were more higher on my preferences than others, uh, especially as I was going through the interview process, but um, it just meant that every single interview that I had, like it wasn't like, oh I'm not sure if I'm interested in this company. It was like I was interested so that allowed me to put my best foot forward. Definitely. And I know one thing I think you did really well, you know, you had the advantage, I think, in some cases where I believe you had maybe not direct like friends or connections that worked in the role, but you had, I think, second and third level connections like friend of a friend or whoever it might be in the industry. One thing, again, I think in addition to the research, there's a balance. You took action as well. You reached out to SDRs that are active at that company. Maybe talk about those experiences briefly in terms of how you started that conversation. I believe you got referrals too. So yeah, walk us through, I think, a distinct advantage you had there. Yeah, so I think, you know, I owe a lot of it to going to a big school like UC Berkeley where um, 
you know, thousands of undergraduate students. And so like, and I knew a lot of people from there, especially once I started adding LinkedIn connections with people who I made, maybe did a project with in the past or were, like you said, uh, second degree connections who had a lot of mutual connections with. Um, so they knew a lot of my friends. And I think from there it was like, I made it a mission that if someone had like 50 mutual connections to me or even less, um, even if they weren't in the sales org, I'd reach out to them because at the very least I can get information from them about what it's like to work at that company. And you mentioned that I got a few referrals to companies. Um, the company that I ended up um, accepting an offer from, Rubrik, I didn't have any referral, but there were other companies where I never asked for a referral. Like, I had a good conversation, a genuine conversation with them about the company and about their experiences, and they offered a referral to me. So I think like that's something to not overlook. You know, it's it, it's important to because it doesn't hurt. You know, at the very least, you know, you wasted maybe like 30 minutes, which is not that big of a deal. So I would say like I made it a mission to really be proactive about it as well. Nice. And then maybe you know a few anecdotes here, kind of in closing, maybe on the interview side at any point, you know, understandably, like nerves are just a thing that happens, yeah. but were they ever severe at any point? How did you, you had so many interviews too, was there any progression you saw from interview one to, you know, 15 or however many you ended up having? Like, talk, walk us through that kind of progression. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, to be honest, I think there was definitely improvements. And I think, well, really, I think the biggest thing that I did was, especially in the beginning, after every single interview that I had, um, right after the interview, I would like sometimes spend even an hour just analyzing the interview I just had, um, s like really kind of digging into the detail of like where I can do better. And that goes back and that goes back to the course in and of itself, because I really took the time to understand how the interview process should be. And again, like I said, the landscape of tech sales and how I should and what I understand about it. And so for me, going to that interview process, it was because of the nerves. You know, a lot of times you're not doing the most optimal things because, that, um, because of those nerves. Even, you know, a lot of the times I think I was doing better than I thought I was, but that still allowed me to really improve those minor details that I thought were important. And so, um, so I really kind of made it a point that after every single interview, I would really look back and analyze how I can do better. And, and funny enough, I noticed that the more time I prepared for each interview, the more nervous I was, but in a good way. Because a lot of times I feel that when I'm more nervous, I actually perform better. Like there's more adrenaline flowing. And so, um, and it means I care about it more. So I think a lot of it was also reframing. So maybe in the beginning where I was interviewing, I was like, oh no, I'm nervous, this is bad. And so that would make me perform more poorly. But then when I really kind of, but then I kind of had a reframe where I said, I'm only nervous because one, this is new to me, but two, I care about this and I want this and it showed it to me. So then I kind of took pride in being nervous and it allowed me to say, no matter how I'm feeling, I got to hone in and really just focus on having a conversation with the other person. And so that was also another thing as I kind of went through the interviews, um, I tried to also reframe it as like, look, like, it's not this strict thing, especially in tech sales. It was even if you're doing like a presentation, for example, it's very casual in that respect, whether it be an SDR manager, a director, the conversations you have are very, um, they're friendly, they're conversational. And so I, I had to, I, I made it a point to remind myself that so um, I would be a little more calm. Definitely. No, and I know one of the things we talked about in prep for some of your final round interviews too is like, don't ever put a false ideal of like perfection as the goal. That's not realistic. And oftentimes, especially in these final round exercises or presentations, they're actually trying to throw a little couple jabs at you, make you mess up intentionally, asking you questions that there's no way you'd know the answer, you know, a low level feature to see how you'd respond. Did you, did you catch anything like that towards the end or, or I, I don't know, any anecdotes on, on that? Yeah, well, that was like one of the biggest things that you taught me throughout the course and in the live calls. As shitty as it might be to say to yourself, like, you know, this interview might not be good. Like, that's part of the process. So it started, especially in those later rounds, it, it, in my head it was like, this has a chance for not being a good interview. 
but I am okay with that. If it's a bad interview, it's a bad interview. I'll take it on the chin because at the very least, I'll be better in the next interview. And that actually was a little freeing to me because it was like now when I was going through the interview, it was like, wow, I can actually get rejected from this interview. And so that actually in turn allowed me to prepare better and made me much more um, driven to study and prepare for these interviews. Now, I mean, in, in closing to, you know, credit to you, I think everyone has more natural talents and, and strengths and, you know, you're selling a, a rather technical product. I think it really fits you well to the level of detail you went in the course, but also credit to you. I see people who get too lost in the content, too kind of paralyzed analysis paralysis, and yeah. I think you struck a really great balance between the two. You've covered a lot, but like, is there anything else that comes to mind just learning, going through this process that you would give to someone, you know, similar background or even different background that's looking to break in? Yeah, um, the, like an important thing I would say is know why you want to get into tech sales. And I'm not even talking about from an interview standpoint because putting interview aside, you should be excited and it really interested in tech sales. Obviously it can be appealing because you know, it is an entry level role and it has a very good career progression. But I would say like, don't just go into, like make sure you actually are interested in it because there's a lot of work into it. And I, even though I haven't started yet, I realize that. So for me, I knew that I wanted to go into tech sales also because it aligned with the career progression. And um, if you're successful, you know, you could really go a long way, but it also aligned well with my personality. I'm naturally very competitive and I've always performed well under pressure and really like that idea of being, of a job being very results driven. And I knew that I would perform very strongly in that kind of environment. That plus my, um, plus my career aspirations really kind of made it a no brainer for me to pursue tech sales. So I would just say like, don't just cater to the interview process. Also think to yourself, why am I interested in this? Why am I passionate in this? And make sure you are, because that will make the interview process a lot easier because you'll be much more genuine. Yeah. Absolutely well said. For everyone watching as well, I'm gonna put Michael's LinkedIn in the description. Also, if you're thinking about Tech Sales Ascension, there will be links there as well. But Michael, really great experience and credit to you. Month and a half, I think, again, you know, you, you really played to your strengths, which I, I think is the biggest thing that I get excited about. There's no one path. If you have a different personality, you can find a different way, leverage different strengths, but I think you really locked in like really quick. So credit to you and uh, thanks everyone for watching. So we'll see you in our next video. Thanks guys.